just give a quick intro, then we'll get into the fun of play. So my name is Monica Cornetti. I am the president of Sententia Gamification. We're based now in a little place called South Padre Island, Texas. So we're right down south, um, just slightly north of Boca Chica Beach, where SpaceX is housed. And up until a few months ago, we were watching rockets launch on a regular basis, but they've curtailed that for a bit as I think they moved that activity to Florida, but it's still an exciting place to be. And at Sententia, we started with the education side of gamification. How can we show other people just like us, people just like you, instructional designers, adult educators, facilitators, training managers, how can we show them the process that we developed at Sententia with the use of learner personas and identifying motivators and matching mechanics to motivators. And so it's really the basics, basis of the framework of what we do. But of course we do so much more as my team regularly reminds me, we got a lot going on and we do. We have very exciting events like Gamacon. We just came off of 48 hours of nonstop and the videos are just about completely finished. Uh, we're just like too short of that. Uh, if you attended GameCon Live, you can already access the videos. We'll start opening that up for other people next week where you can gain access to those videos. And what we're going to encourage is that you schedule some watch parties with your team and select some videos that you really want to watch and digest and, and unpack and repack together. So uh, we do a number of different GameCon events. Our next one will be live in Austin, Texas in September. And we're going with a dark espionage, noir type of theme of spies and uh, secret agents and double agents. So it'll be a ton of fun. We also of course do custom design work and audits and we have our Gamified Learning Academy with Just-In-Time Learning. And we have Friday Night Game Garage. And for those of you who this might be your first time, it came up by, by fluke. It was just an accident, really. Training Magazine asked us to do a closing session at their annual training conference. So every day we did a game garage because adults need recess too. So just a place to chillax, unwind, maybe have a drink if it's the appropriate time of day where you are and hang out with friends, just like we used to back in high school. And as a result of that, of the top five sessions, of the top three sessions, ours were two of those top three sessions. So from that, we're like, wow, this is a good thing. Let's keep doing it. So every Friday since then, we've held a game garage just like this. It's a place where we play and learn and experiment and try new things and give each other feedback. Um, I know that sometimes it can be scary coming here for the first time, because you think, well, are these people geeks? And will I fit in? And what it's going to be like? And it's the great thing is that it's the nicest people you're going to meet on the planet. And uh, before we get moving today, I want to prove that to you. So, Jonathan, are you ready? Would you say you're ready? Yep. Got to. OK, so what we're going to do people. is just. Uh, OK, one sec before you go. What we're going to do is we're just going to ask you to go into a breakout group for just five minutes right now. And you're going to be doing some design challenges that Rebecca's going to throw out there for us today. But I want you to meet some new people. Just real quick, real easy, no pressure, like who you are, where you work, what you do there. And since we're talking about PowerPoint superpowers, the team wanted me to talk about, you know, what is your superpower? But I think that could be kind of hard. So what, let's do it the opposite direction. What is one thing that no one would ever mistake that that's your superpower? What is one thing that you're not very good at and you know you're not very good? And people may reinforce that by telling you, you're not very good at that, are you? So just share with each other. What is one thing that's definitely not a superpower for you? Five minutes, three or four people, who you are, where you work, what you do there, something that's never going to be mistaken that this is a superpower. Let's have some fun with that. We'll see you back here in five. What did we hear about non-superpowers in your group? Who had a good one? <laughs> Anyone want to share? Do arts and crafts. You don't do arts and crafts. <laughs> That's good. 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 
Oh, I'm, I'm reverberating. Yeah. That was an interesting echo. We don't need to hear me 12 times. Um, Anybody Excel. else have a good one? Excel? Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I just, I was oh, Excel? Excel? All right. All right. Kathleen in our group, group two, uh, said that uh, she's in a job search right now, so she has no anti-superpower. Oh, right. <laughs> totally yes. understand. Yes, I love have all it. the skills. All. Yes, <laughs> I have none. Uh, except one of those, like, you know, what's your biggest weakness? Well, I often see the good in too many people. You know, I only see the good in people, right? That's my weakness. I, I'm and sorry, I attribute that to the wrong person. It's Linda that was in our group. Oh, Linda. Yeah. Um, Mine is definitely rock, paper, scissors. And a couple of the speakers <laughs> has the rock, paper, scissors thing. I will always lose, even against a five-year-old. I just can't play rock, paper, scissors for some reason. So fortunately, it's not a skill set I have to bring into my career very often. But that was fun. I'm glad that you got a chance to play that. Let me just share a few more things here before we get rolling. I mentioned that our primary passion is education. Uh, someone once told me, you have the soul of a teacher, Monica. And I really love that because I do love the whole act of learning and, I, and learning myself and learning from other, like learning from all of you. And like, what? How do you do that? I didn't do that before. And so uh, we do have three levels of certification. You start with gamification surveyor and you work your way through and each gets a little bit more challenging a little bit more in depth as far as your time and your design. So we start with the basic kind of 101, that's a gamification surveyor. We go more in depth on our, our process and, and certain components that we really don't bring into the level one that's in the journeyman. And that's more of a 12 hour course. And then the master craftsman, that's actual a full deployment of a gamified learning program. And that could be for a not-for-profit or for your work or uh, a, a class for students. So um, it's the design intensive, and then we do 90 days of coaching. But right now we are running a 15% off special on our certification. So through next Wednesday, I believe it is, there is a 15% discount. So you can go out to sententialgamification.com forward slash events. That's where you you will see all of the upcoming. There's also a link at the top there that will take you to our certifications page, which gives you much more in-depth information on what are these certifications, what will it look like, and of course the team's always available to answer your questions. So I would hope that if you want to continue your journey and really get a solid foundation and a framework, a proven framework that thousands have used to bring gamification into their learning programs, we are well beyond theory. I mean, we give you the theory, but we don't stop there. We give you the actual, this is how you do it so that you can actually implement in real life and not be left wondering, all right, this is great. Now, what am I going to do with it? So we show you what to do with it. And tonight we have an example of that. Rebecca, this is, this is what we talk about. Uh, Rebecca has these superpowers with PowerPoint and we've known it since we've known her. And so then Renee and she connected on her doing a game garage. And the reality is for most of us, just like I heard Excel is not one of our superpowers. For those of us who are fairly comfortable using Excel, we still probably use this much of what the program can actually do. One of our gamification journeymen, Clive, shared a pivot table with me earlier this week. And I was like, you know, I took a class on this a few years back. And it was just one of those where we watched the instructor create pivot tables, and then we left, but they didn't send us out with a single aid, job aid in hand for us to actually practice to learn how that's, learn that skill. So of course, when I went back to my computer, I couldn't reproduce what she had shown because there was no opportunity for me to practice it. So tonight we're gonna get both. We're gonna get the, here's what you can do, and we're gonna get a chance to practice it, and there's tools that you can use for follow-up after we're done playing tonight. So you can go back, get in your zone and try it out in real life so you can apply it for your real life program. So with that, let me turn it over to the lovely, talented, creative, uh, friendly, outgoing, brilliant, never disappoints, Rebecca Arnett. Welcome to the platform, Rebecca. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for building me up so much. <laughs> 
I know. Like, Thank you, Monica. To go, I am an introvert and I don't like people. Yeah, yeah it's a lot, Monica. <laughs> so for those of you who were here a couple of weeks ago, we did a, I did a thing based off of the Noun Project and Audionautics, and y'all saw me a little slippet of the risk game. So this is going to be based off the risk game, but since not everybody plays in risk, instead tonight we are going to play the chef adventure game. So I'm going to show you the chef adventure game. And then uh, what I'm going to do after that is show you how I build those internal links. And then we'll send you into breakout rooms so that you can create course the second course so they're going to get a primary course and then you get to get to do the secondary course okay so let us start and let me see since i have shared my screen let me make sure i have shared sound all right so we shared sound too So your journey so far, as you go about your day-to-day -day job, you encounter opportunities to enhance or ruin your dish. Can you use your cooking skills to provide the tastiest dish, or will you leave your guests with a foul taste in their mouths? So we'll go ahead and ready to play. You have the following ingredients. So which combo is the tastiest? You have some peanut butter, some shrimps. Brussels sprouts, marshmallows, mushrooms, artichokes, jelly bread, olive oil, and milk. So you have three choices. You can either whip up a peanut butter jelly and marshmallow sandwich with a cold glass of milk. You can create a saute dish of Brussels sprouts, mushrooms, and shrimps with a side of grilled artichokes. Or these are all lovely and tasty ingredients. Let's just throw them all in a pot and let the magic happen. So... With a show of hands, who wants item number one? And I can't see some of you, so maybe instead we can make a quick poll. In chat, if you want number one, go ahead and put one. If you want number two, put two. And if you want number three, go ahead and put number three in the chat, and we'll see which ones we get. We're getting a lot of twos. I see some ones and some threes. Let's go to let's go ahead and we'll go to number two first. All right. So we're going to create a saute dish of Brussels sprouts, mushrooms, and shrimps with a side of grilled artichokes. So we click on here and then you serve them a shrimp stir fry with Brussels sprouts and mushrooms with a side of grilled artichokes. And this is delicious, they all exclaim. But you notice they avoid eating those Brussels sprouts. We never outgrew that. All right, we could go back. So we had some number ones. Let's give them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So you serve them a peanut butter and jelly and marshmallow sandwich on a wooden plate with grilled, with chilled glasses of milk. And don't you think this is too pretentious? One of your guests cried, I'm not a child. I need something more grown up. Somebody did not, uh, somebody didn't have their Wheaties that day. And number three, they are all tasty. So let's throw them in a pot and let the magic happen. What is that smell? The milk is scalded and the liquid inside looks an ominous green color. But oh my, what is this flavor? A guest exclaims. I've never experienced this before. This is beyond umami. You are truly a culinary genius. The rest of the guests look on in horror as she grabs the pot with both hands and begins to guzzle the stew straight from the pot. So this is just an example of just how to have fun with some internal links. All right, so let me show you how this is done, okay? So when you're building out your PowerPoint presentation, we have our scenario. I'll show you how to do this on the second course. All right. So all this is is a text box. Matter of fact, I can just delete this and I would just want to insert a text box. And then I tell it whatever I wanted to say. Um, Rebecca, which PowerPoint are you using? Which version? This is Microsoft 365. OK. So I just say, okay, on to the second course. 
I'm going to shape my, I'm going to go to shape format up the top right hand side. I want to fill in my shape and I want to outline it. And then I want to change my words to be white. Oops, you didn't do what I wanted you to do. Oh, no, that was not what I wanted. Boy, that's the one I want. Okay, so so once I have that onto the second course, all I'm going to do is right click on it. And then I'm going to go to link. And most of the time when you see link, you're used to seeing it under existing file or page or web page. And then you put your URL in here. I think that's what most of us do. But instead, if you say place it in this document, it'll say, well, where do you want to go in your document? So you can kind of look and you say, OK, I know this is going to be on page number seven. So I'm going to click it here and then hit OK. OK, so now it's now when I hover over this. It'll say scenario control click to follow the link. All right, so if I click on here. It's going to take me to this slide. And then I just follow along and I do the same thing. Go to my next page. Same thing. Right click it. Link it. And link to page number seven. Link. Page seven. And it also helps because it'll tell you over here that's where seven is. Yeah, Monica. Uh, when you do that link and it pulls it up and you tell it where you're gonna go going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so like you right click and it says link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it tells you what happens if you click that show and return. What does that mean? Like it'll just show it and then bring you right back. I believe so. I'd have to play. Okay. I haven't played with that one yet. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Nope. Fine. So that gives you that internal link that allows you to see something and you get to move to that place. Yeah. And two finger tap for right click. Um, and our trial, you had a questions. Yes, um, I see on the bottom left, it says slide six of eight. So from my point of view, I thought there were only eight slides in the deck there, but then mm -hmm. you've got it going to a different page that doesn't necessarily show as a slide. No, there's 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 eight slides altogether. And so I am on right here when I click on then I go to edit the link. It only okay. has. So these are the slide titles. Okay. So there's eight slides. And so this one is number seven. Cool. You can also have it go to the first slide, the last slide, the next slide, or the previous slide. So these links are also good for that, too. So mm -hmm. I've done that before in, in a PowerPoint. Let's just say I want to show them something but then i want to go back to my first slide i can I'll, i will say hit i'll put hit home and i'll put the home give it a home button and then it'll take it back to the home page it'll take it to that first slide but once you have that and then what you can do for these so for like a scenario like this each of these links to its own page so you'll notice that this one links to you serve your guests the peanut butter and jelly. This next one, it links to the artichoke one, slide five. And then this one should link to slide six. And it'll show you what, what, what the slide looks like. Monica, you had a question? 
Many, Rebecca. Well, so on this slide, I see that you have the music speaker, but I didn't hear music on this slide, did I? Yes, you did. You should have oh. heard this. Oh, yes, I did hear that. Isn't that cool that I yes. I heard it, but I didn't hear it. Very good. Very, very cool. Love and it. and I'll show you all how to do this more a little bit later. But there is when you go to the playback, there is a, a lovely little thing that says hi during show. And so this lives here, but you don't see it when I'm showing it as a slideshow. Very cool. And, and it'll just do, and you can do it where you want it to uh, loop until stopped and to automatically start. And I'll show you how to, to do the trimming of the audios in a little bit. But yes, so it's got the, the music. I've got music here and I had music here. The other thing that you can do with internal links are are these what I call the power buttons. So when you go to insert and you do the icons, I'm sorry, not the icons. Get away from there. When you go to do the shapes, you'll notice down here at the very bottom these thing called action buttons. And I think we've all seen the action buttons. These action buttons actually have things attached to them already. So you don't have to go in and put additional stuff in there you're just going to tell it what you want it to do uh, so in this one it was the 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 go back feature so if i if i chose this or you could do the home feature which will take you to your home page they have a get information i i like the little instead i like the the help button instead but you could do the information uh, there's even a sound button so if you wanted to change your volume and you could even if you know how to do it, you can also action button that's blank. And this allows you to do things. So on mouse click, you could hyperlink it to somewhere. Uh, you could hyperlink it to a slide, a URL, uh, another show. You can do other files. You could link it to those other places. Or you can run a particular program if you've got some programming skills, run a macro. Um, you can play sounds with it. You can even do a mouse over, which is really cool. And all these action buttons do that too. That, that will allow, also allow you to go someplace. So if you just hovered over here, you could have it where it sent you to someplace else. Uh, let's but that's the these action buttons so this action button when i click on edit the link it has it like hey i'm sending it to my hyperlink to a part of this of the the powerpoint presentation and for this one i wanted to hyperlink it to the last page that it should have been at and then for this one i wanted it to hyperlink to my journey so far this was my information page yes um, Artel, did you have another question or? Okay. Um, Lindsay, you had a question? Yeah, so I've done this kind of stuff in Google Slides, but when there was a way to like hide the page, hide the slide, unless you clicked on it. But if someone doesn't click your buttons and just scrolls through the presentation, will they see all the slides? So there's a way to get past that. What you'll do is when you go to save this, so when I go to save this and I hit save as, instead of saving this as what we call a PPTX, which means PowerPoint presentation, the PPTX, instead what you wanna save it as is a, is a PPSX, a PowerPoint show. And what the PowerPoint show does is it takes all the other stuff away. So when I save, to, save my chef game as a PPSX, and I click save, you're going to see this because this was my original show. But now when I click on chef game, it automatically comes up. It's going to take you just a minute. As the show, it will not allow for anything.
So they can still, if they really wanted to, they could go to the other ones, but but it's built in that they can, and then on to the second course. And then if they click on here, it takes them to the journey so far. And then if they click here, it'll take them back to the last page they were on. But it, it stops them from scrolling through, trying to find the answers. It, I use, it's especially useful in um, the power when I do escape rooms. <laughs> So they can't scroll to the to the lock page. All right. So those were just some of the, the tips and tricks around just building those internal links. Yes. Is it Flea? Flea? Flea. 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 Okay. Um, ah. I wanted to ask you about the uh, next and previous buttons. Do you put those on a master slide or are you just pasting them on each slide as you go? So I, for this one, I'm pasting them on each slide as I go, but you can paste them on the master slide. So they always. So they always show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they still work, but you still have to set the links though, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about this master slide? Yeah. So when you're when you're clicking on your your slide, let me see. Where are you slide master slides that I want? View. Look in view. Thank you. So you have what we call our slash master slide master. And this actually creates what every one of your slides is going to look like. And you can update your master slide to have different things on them. And whatever you're putting on here will um, be inserted into your regular slides. So all of them will have that. Um, a lot of times you'll see this when you see a watermark too. So have you ever seen one that's, that your company has branded their PowerPoint slide? It's typically listed under the, this master slide deck. And you can add different things uh, to your master slide. Um, this, for instance, you could add a, a date. You could add something that you wanted as a footer, um, page number. Uh, this one actually talks about your master's style. So what kind of font do you want to use? What kind of uh, thing do you want to use? You can also do colors, background styles. So you can, you can do that. And it will change your now it's not going to look different on here because this i have these as specialized black backgrounds but you notice this one that was white it's now the master color and i can go back into the slide master you can also look for themes so if you wanted everything to be this theme you could do that. And then when I close my slide master, you'll notice that it now looks looks and feels like everything else. So Rebecca, do you use, do you customize your slide master a lot? Do you, I don't. Yeah. Does anyone on the call do that? I mean, I'll go in occasionally, but I've not, to me, it's like a whole nother skill to master is the master slide. But can I clarify Flea's question? If I put the forward button, like go to next slide button on the master slide, is that programming going to be there then? Let's let's check it. So this will link you to the next slide. I'm gonna move this over. Or you know what, I'm going to move it up here so that it doesn't get confused with the other stuff. And then go back to my slide master and I close my page. So here it is. Does it work? Oh, we don't know yet. Okay. About the truck. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, you could put this on here if you wanted it to be 
uh, the next slide or you wanted it to go home, you could put this on your master slide if you wanted every slide to have that. That's the thing with the master slide is if you want every slide to have it. Um, yeah, yeah. But every I, slide I doesn't have it. Well, you can no, use because these are custom. These, yeah. these were these were ones I had already created that already have things sitting on top of them. But you notice that they right. it did change. The, the it does have them. Okay. And it changed the look. It changed the look of my slide. I had this as a design slide. That is, if you've ever played with that, that's another thing too. I may have to pull up a different PowerPoint for that. Um, yeah, you could design a master slide for each kind of your slide. Um, you can also, let's just say I'm coming, I want to come create a new slide. Um, here's a picture of Catherine Bates. Design ideas is something that is outside of uh, the, the master slide deck. It gives you ideas of how you may want your picture to look. And so you can choose ideas from here. Um, you're like, oh, I really like how this one looks. But it's very interesting because my next slide, when I hit enter, it goes back to a plain page. Now you can, the design idea says, oh, do you want to keep this going? And you can. Oh, if, if you press on the yellow, is that what that yellow part is for? No, the, no, 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 no. That's part of the design. The, the, the design okay. ideas just created a, a nice little yellow triangle. Okay. Yep. But you could also have a blue. Yeah. You can see more design ideas. So here, here it is in black. So sometimes I'll use, if I have something that I'm doing that's more of a presentation style presentation that I just want to, uh, like, uh, for instance, I did a game, a trivia game the other day. And after each piece of trivia, I brought up a slide that explained more about that piece of trivia. So Catherine Bates was was one of them, her question was, uh, which song did she write? And it was America the Beautiful. And so I brought a picture of her up. And so then I had a, a little slide that I had a design slide that just kind of showed some brief information about who she was. Uh, so that people could kind of understand a little bit more about what was happening. Cool. Adele. Adele Merritt. Hi, can you question? show us again after you choose a design? Are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, after how it shows. You, right. After you design? chose a design, yes. How do you, how do you get variations on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's called design ideas. Right. And you can actually see it, it's under design. And then all the way in the on the right hand side is called designer and it's called design ideas and it's uh, it gives you it's an idea pane to uh, give you instant slide makeovers. And this right. is a built in PowerPoint feature. Yes, but then when you selected the one with the yellow mm -hmm. triangle at the bottom, you got variations of that yellow. Yes. So the design ideas, is, my pane is still open. So it says, here's more design ideas oh, that you, okay, can, okay. you can you can continue to use. So here's the yellow ones again. Um, yeah, sometimes you can recreate the design idea. Uh, and then, or if I wanted to keep it like this, I could keep it like this. I could also see other ones that I wanted to. Um, and they even have one that, that looks like this. So you can continue to design it or the other thing that I end up doing most of the time, which I think is what Glenda says she just does, is I just right click it and I just duplicate my slide <laughs> and then I just take out the picture and then I'm like, ah, this is, this is a duplicate. There's another question in the chat from Brittany I don't want missed. Sure. Would you like me to read that? Uh, yes, please. How, how do you present this material to learners, e.g. do you add to a LMS or learning platform or have learners access via SharePoint um, and then have the learners download and view the slideshow locally from there. 
it's quite frankly up to whatever technology that you have. This does not really work well under a SCORM because everything is an internal link and so the SCORM is not going to work it's not going to like it. Uh, so instead, what you could do is if you have a SharePoint, you could save it as a the, the PP, um, the PowerPoint slideshow and just hand it out to people. Uh, a lot of times I will use these as a learning tool with a group of people. So kind of just like I did where I was talking to y'all and I was like, okay, where, which one do we want? Do we want one, two or three? I'll design maybe a poll and that allows them to choose you know oh most of y'all have chosen three okay we're going to go with three and we're going to go that way it really will depend on what you're using it for also it's so like my risk one is more of a personal one-on-one -on -one thing because it's how you feel about risk whereas the chef game is more to be played together and discussed of like no those are horrible ingredients i wouldn't put those things together why would you do that uh, so more of an engagement style of thing so i would do this as a bigger crowd I, I know that's a, not a lot of good answers, but it's probably the best answer. <laughs> yeah, and there's some more ideas um, coming up in chat as well. Glenda suggested you can export it to a video and wrap that in a squirm mm -hmm. warper. Oh. <laughs> Rapper. <laughs> that's good. Rapper. 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 Oh, there we go. <laughs> Rapper, you're right. <laughs> One of my superpowers is definitely not typing. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. Very nice. Very nice what you're showing us, Rebecca. Thank you. Oh, cool. And as you know, for those of us who use PowerPoint all the time, I imagine you like me are still like, what? 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 How come I don't know that? Yeah. Very cool. And things move so fast with, especially if you have Microsoft 365. I, I will be honest, Microsoft 365 was one of those things that uh, every time I logged in, I was like, oh, there's something new. Hold on, let me go play with this. Let me see what this does. So just like you were asking me about the the, the click and, I, I, uh, that one's new for me. So I have to play with it. Uh, another thing that this has nothing to do with uh, anything, but just the fact that I, I am fascinated by this. Uh, did you know that they now have three 3D models that you can you can add uh, to your your PowerPoint? And these are animated. Uh, so they have regular ones that you can kind of position how you want. But um, I was very fascinated by the fact that I could make a dinosaur. Do it, do it. Run yeah, yeah, across yeah. my screen. I'll the bee. <laughs> we'll take the dinosaur. Oh, he didn't like that. I'll try it again. Hmm. So these are all the animated ones. So yeah, let's, we have a nice little wasp. Let's see what we if we can make the wasp come up. It's not a wasp. It's, it's too fuzzy. It's a bee. Oh, uh, it's not. Let me see. It does it not in. like? Uh, it does not like my uh, my com my work computer um, oh. backend. <laughs> So it is it is unhappy right now with that. Uh, sometimes I can I can get it, other times I can't. But needless to say, let me just say this: these are animated models. You can position them. If I can get the thing to actually show up right, you can position them, and you can actually make them run and do small things like that. Uh, somebody said they weren't good at Excel. Um, Excel has these three D models too. So if you ever want your how to sort to run across Excel, you can do it. Excellent. Rebecca, where were they on the menu? Where did you see them? Yeah, so just uh, so when you go to insert, you'll have your shapes, your icons, and then your 3D models. Okay. Fun. Yep. And the 3D models, the stock models, so you can, you have, they have two different kinds. So like I said, they have the animated ones, but then they also have just regular ones that are, are nice to look at. Um, let me see if it'll let me insert one of these. It's probably going to get mad at me. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I do this. No, 
something that is unsupported in it. Okay, so <laughs> play with it. Um, but what you can do with those is you can actually position them. They turn, they're 3D models, so they do turn around. You could have a, a, a globe of the Earth, and you can, you can use that. You could also then um, use your animations on it, because it is an image, to make it spin. So if I, let's just say I wanted to make this one spin. I can make this thing spin. You could do the same thing with your little model. Too much fun. Yeah. Who's playing with a 3D model behind the scenes? Tell the truth. Who went back there and just put a dinosaur on your side? I think Flea did. <laughs> I did. I did. I confess. I wanted to see it. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Yes. There was a very interesting add in for it. They even have one for education. Like there's one that's a beating heart. I saw that. So are you saying you could add, I know you're going to show us animation. You could add the animation. So it's moving across the screen. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yep. 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 So I think for right now, let's see. So much. We are almost at the at the at we're at five fifty. Would now be a good time to just kind of send everybody to breakout rooms and let them play with the internal links. Uh, are you going to give us something to play on? I yes. So I sent Monica. I mean, I sent Renee this slide deck. So y'all will be building the second course. Okay. So what you what you'll need to do is. Um, Jonathan, are you able to drop that in chat? I think I think uh, Steve had it. Did you not? I don't have Steve, it. Steve, are you okay, here? If, if not, yep, if I not, have it. I I'm can... pulling it in right now. Okay, All Steve's right. got it. Awesome. It's beyond me. I have it. If you don't, nope, I'm putting Steve's it in right it. now. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Rebecca. Thank you, Steve. So y'all will be. So here's what you'll need to do. You will need to choose your breakout room. Will need to choose one of these three items. Go ahead and link to page number seven, and then you will create your own second course scenario. And then you'll have an additional page that you will use some internal links to link to your page where we will find out the results of your item. And how tasty it was. So are we sticking with peanut butter and jelly and or the second, or can we change? You change. So you're actually gonna what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna first create this link that says move to actually, you know what? We don't even need to do that. Here's what I'm gonna have you do. I'm just gonna have you go to page number seven. You're gonna put your scenario in. You can go to the noun project and find yourself an icon determine whatever ingredients you want think of chopped or what was the one that they used to do back in the day where it was a sabotage sabotage where they had to to give them bad items and they had to cook with them so think of the items that you want your person to cook with give them three options of what they would make with that and then you would create a page number a new page number eight where you would have your results of how this came out. So just following the script of what I did with page number three, four, five, and six, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to create a seven, eight, nine, and 10. Do you have questions? Steve posted the, the document up there. So make sure you click it and download it called Chef Game PowerPoint X. ETX. All right, so how much time do we have to create? Renee? I would say, is 10 minutes enough for this, Rebecca? Or I think so. I think 10 to play, to try it. Good, good. All right. If, all right, so create a scenario. See what you can come up with. And don't worry about, um, like, you can play with the look, too. If you've got an yeah. idea on a design, go ahead and design away chefs what's the start for chop how do they how do they release the chefs chefs you have 30 I'm minutes on the clock now. so yeah, 30 yeah. minutes yeah. <laughs> what does it say 
You have chefs. You have ten minutes on the clock, starting now. All right. Here we go. We got uh, we got something for you, John. Just wait. <laughs> Rebecca, do you want to leave this debrief and see what people were able to create? Who wants to share? Sure. We have uh, we have what uh, seven rooms. Do we want to just go in numerical order with room number one? We have a uh, Bev, Leslie, and Lindsay. Okay. Well, we didn't finish, but yeah, we can go first. Okay. Um, how do I share my screen? Where is it? Uh, if you're going to, when you hit share screen, everyone, if you put sound in at the bottom of, when you click on that green share screen, on your bottom left, you're going to see a little tiny box that says share sound. Make sure you click that because any music you put into your PowerPoint or sound, we won't hear it unless you click that. Yep. Okay. Okay, we did not get to the sound part. We did not get that far. Um, <laughs> we spent the whole time coming up with our ingredients, which are curry paste, edamame, fish sticks, onions, plum wine, licorice, cherry Garcia ice cream, bacon, and a turnip. And your three choice, your first choice is you whip up a savory ice cream sundae with cherry Garcia ice cream, layered with licorice and topped with a plum wine reduction and candied bacon bits. Your second option is you, you create a refreshing salad of turnip greens, pickled turnips, onion straws, and edamame. And then the third is you get to eat all of them together. <laughs> so are the, um, are the links programmed? If you... Yeah. Well, we, we were having so much fun with the ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> Did you did you manage to to try out a link though to see if you just to uh, down the bottom right, Linz, you can um... like I I always use Google Slides. I don't know. I know. Yeah, yeah was, if you hit the back sharing. button, it'll, if you hit the back button, okay. right above home, yeah. yeah, and then down at the slide very show. bottom oh. on the right hand side. All right, yeah, that, yeah. There's that a little one. bitty slide show. <laughs> there you go. I click on there. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I thought I changed that, but maybe I didn't click save. Oh, okay. So. Well, good job. Good ingredients, you guys. <laughs> good job. Cherry Garcia ice cream. Yes. Mm. And licorice. Uh, I, so I just want to know how did uh, putting it all together, what did y'all create? Does anyone want have one really that you feel like you got, you made pretty good progress and something you can show us? With links even. With links, did any group get that far or were you talking about ingredients too? Hey, John Chen. Welcome. I might be able to get something in just one second. Okay. Anyone yeah. else? Kevin, we, was that your hand up? Oh, Glenda has Glenda's your hand, hand up. up. Yep. Yeah, we have right. something. It's not gorgeous, but it is definitely something. Something definite. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is all about trying out those linky things, eh? Yep. That's, right. That's what it's about. That's what this is about. I don't hear the difference. <laughs> I know I that's a microaggression, and I apologize for that. <laughs> Canadian, no sound, no sound. It's pure love. Okay. Uh, All right. So here's ours. Ooh. We have um, a combo of chocolate pasta anchovies. Rum, white cake, sugar, garlic, onions, eggs, and oil. And we decided that we could whip up an anchovy and garlic pasta. But we were afraid we'd lose friends or find there you go. on the couch. Hey, um, you worked. Whoops. One of them didn't work. Take the rum cake which was a hit for everybody except the pregnant woman. That's good. Yeah. Very good. And thrown the, I just kept all that one because we were running out of time. So. All right. We got the yeah. links and everything. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Linda, are you ready? I guess. Okay. <laughs> what I didn't do, what I didn't have time to do was the links back to the original 
you know, so I'll have okay. to do that manually. Let's so. just toggle. Yeah. So somebody else, if you'll unshare. Yeah, go oh, yeah that's, uh, at the bottom, you'll have to uh, unshare it. Yep, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks. All right. So we love to set fires and want to create a dish that is delicious, even oh. after we blow out the flame. <laughs> nice. So we created an appetizer, a cocktail, and a dessert. So the appetizer is Limburger and Ludafisk uh, that's set on fire. And when we do that, woo! <laughs> <laughs> So then the cocktail is a flaming lychee margarita with tequila, lychee liqueur, Grand Marnier, simple syrup, lime juice, and a floater of Everclear. <laughs> then, of course, the last one is our dessert. Beautiful recipe for banana uh, split flambe. And, of course, the rum is what you set on fire. And when you Ooh, do nice. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> nice one. Love the clown. That was very cute. Very cute. Very, very That's cute. Right. Well done, everyone. And just hey. to see your, your superpowers are starting to get unleashed. You're building. Yay. All right, Rebecca, what else do you have? To, we're almost running out of time, but can you show yep. us a little bit on animations? Yeah. Let me pull up my animation slide deck real quick. And let me go ahead and share my screen again. All right. Is it sharing the right screen? Because it decided it did not want to share what I wanted it to share. I saw a lot of icons on your screen. Yes, it did. <laughs> okay. So this is my other tips and tricks on a few things. So this one is called this is about animation so i was talking earlier that you and, and monica will show a little bit later um her little 3d she made power and then she made him jump and spin but i wanted to show you that you could create some really cool things with powerpoint uh for instance this could what are you doing computer you could make a nice little board game fairly easy and make your avatar move from place to place so for instance we have our little bouncing baby here and i want my little bouncing baby oh it's done a whole lot of crazy stuff today yeah it was behaving better last night something went wrong restart your well, okay i can't mm -hmm. All right, let me stop my share real quick and let me see. Who's doing that? John Chen? <laughs> yeah, that's the beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good, Monica. Without even what? looking, I knew. You know your people. <laughs> While Rebecca oh, no. is restarting, let me show you what um, I learned from Rebecca in this very short time together. So first, we put this dinosaur, which is one of the animated so you could, with what she's going to show us next, have him like start over here and like run across the screen. So that could be really fun in some way. I don't know how, but it would be really fun. <laughs> I don't know where to use it, but it could you, be fun. Do you know if you can make him jump? Well, watch this. Yes. Then using animations, uh, this is one of the 3Ds that is not animated, but you can add the animation so you can get him to jump and then he spin. You can, you can get him to jump again. So <laughs> they got pirates, you guys. They got pirate stuff. <laughs> they have like a dozen pirate stuff in here that Monica did not know existed. So watch out. <laughs> I know what you're doing before level three starts. <laughs> yeah. So I'll stop sharing. Are you ready, Rebecca? Yes. Okay. What I'm going to do is I will show you this from scratch because apparently that is what it was going to take. All right. So let me just show you real quick. This is how you could potentially build a board game or something else that you wanted to use. So I'm going to come over here to my shapes and I'm just going to choose some random shapes. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste a couple of them. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so here's my little copy and paste of my little oval squares. So I'm also going to go over here into my uh, inserts. And I'm going to insert an icon. I just want, I just want a baby. So here's my little baby. Okay, so we're going to go over here. So here is here's some interesting things that you can do in some animations. So I'm going to come over here to animations and make sure you have what you want that's animated to be you clicked on that okay because uh it will animate whatever you've got clicked on so i'm going to come down here and then i want to go down here to where it's called motion paths and i'm going to come over here to custom paths okay and i'm going to click on here and i'm going to tell this baby you want to jump right here all right and then i'm going to come over here to preview and it's going to show my little baby jumping all right here is how you can make them jump from screen from place to place i'm coming over here to animation pane and it says okay this is called graphic number nine i'm gonna tell it i want to see my effect options and it go to my my timing and you say you want to start on a click your trigger you want to start effect on a click of your oval so I want it to be a clicked on. I have ovals three, four, five, seven, and nine. You can name these ovals too. It might make it easier, but I'm just going to do it on oval number three. So my little baby going to jump over there. All right. So if I click on here, my baby's going to jump here. If I do this again and I click on custom, I add an animation and I add another custom path, I can add my baby and I can say, I want to jump here and I want to jump here. Okay. And then I'm going to hit my preview. And then for here, I'm going to bring him down and I want to make this my trigger. Is when you click on oval four. So the baby jumps to number four. And just you just continue forward doing this. Add an animation of custom path here, here, here. Same thing. <laughs> and then I'm going to tell it I want my trigger to be when I click on number five. Okay. So then what that does is in this PowerPoint, here's my baby. And I say, okay, baby's got to go here. Baby's just going to go jump over here. I want to click on this one. Oh. Did you not accept it? Did not accept it. Hold on. It didn't accept my trigger. Hold on. This is the fun of PowerPoint too. Is sometimes when you're doing something, I'm like, I I don't know why you're not doing what I want you to do. How does it know uh, which number four is? It it has each of these is named. In your uh it was named automatically when you placed them there, right? Mm -hmm. There's also a selection pane, right? That it, yeah. Let's see, why aren't you doing what I want you to do? Maybe that'll fix it. No, we're not accepting them. Oh. <laughs> you know, that is the fun part of, of doing this is whenever you're having all these why, um, when you were setting up what your trigger would be, why do you pull it down? I don't know if I'm explaining what I'm, what, if that makes sense, what I'm asking you. Oh, I just, this reorders it for me so that I know I'm doing trigger number three. And then this is trigger five. And this is the trigger is over five. And then this one was trigger number four. So Leslie Kuhn says, I think there's a rewind option in the effect timing. There is. Thank you. 
There you go. There we go. So now my baby should jump and then he should go back. And it's still not accepting these two for whatever no. reason. I don't know. Um, huh. But this would be how you would you would create these in your thing to make it jump from graphic to graphic. And like when you made your custom path, it's not a nice little arc, but the baby jumps in a nice little arc. Like you don't have to worry that it's perfectly. No, you don't have to worry about, you know, that your baby is, is, is doing it. Yeah. There are also other ones too. So like, let's just say I'm, I'm just removing these. You can also, you know, you can make the baby um, with these motions. You can make the baby do a turn uh, loops. Uh, so small things like that. So you can make the, the, you can make, not only do you have the capabilities of doing the entrance and the emphasis and the exits, but you actually have the motion paths that you can have them used to. Fun. Very fun. Is anyone really using motion paths in what you're designing and how are you using it? John, oh, baby. Very good, John. This is Glenda. I use a lot of motion paths, but I use them in storyline, which is oh. kind of similar. Similar, but different. Yes. Very similar. Yeah. Got a lot of the same features. Yeah. I think what I had I had created the other day was I created two um, ice skaters, and they skated around each other and did loop de loops around each other. That's fun. So you can make, you know, just some small things just to make your icons a little more animated. They can do things. Um, it really, like Monica showed, it really becomes fun when you have the 3D models because then you can make them jump and spin or move or go across the page. So like Monica, for like your, like if you wanted to bring up your, um, your 3D model of your uh, pirate, pirate, you can make him come across the PowerPoint where he starts one place and then you tell him the animation of go in a, a straight line and he would move to that aspect of it. Yeah. You could, you could make them move across the, the page and do those types of things. The other thing that I was going to show y'all has to do with trimming sound. So when we were playing with audio nautics the other day and the noun project, when, um, Frank and Adam brought up those two items. Um, Audionautics, you know, you could download, there's all types of free and different styles of music. So you saw that I played it in the chef game. To put that information on there, if you, you can download it from Audionautics onto your computer. So when I put this on here, this one is called Enemy Ships. And it comes with audio and playback information. I really like this because I can fade it in and fade it out depending on how long my slide is going to be. You can also trim your audio. So when your audio starts off, it says it's, it's this long. And so I can actually go in and trim it that says, you know what, hey, I only want it to be this, this long. And that kind of helps. So it kind of helps you if you only want to see a small clip it of something that then you can you can have that. And then when you hit OK, it's only going to show that little bit, that trimmed portion of your uh, you can also change the volume. I have it currently set at high. You can change it to medium or low or you can mute it out. You can play your music across slides. So if you wanted to have the same music for every slide, you could do that. You could also loop it until it stopped. Meaning that if they're going to be sitting on this slide for quite a while, you can have the music continuously loop. 
the hide during show is really cool because hiding during the show, this will show on your PowerPoint. This part will show up here on your PowerPoint. You can click it if you need it, or if you hide it during your your show, it'll just you tell it click automatically, and it will just automatically start playing. And then you can have it hidden, and then it's just music that shows up, so the user doesn't see it, and they don't play it. Um, playing in the background again, it does it uh, plays it across all your slides in the background. Hmm. So that is some ways to kind of just play, you know, with the with the music. Um, so you could even have a couple of different musics on here. Play one and then go play the next one, which this is Fallen Sky. So I could do the same thing and I could trim it. So have this one in there first. When it finishes, I could tell it to uh, fade in after so many seconds to tell this one to fade out and then this one to fade in. And so you can play two different musics if you needed to. I don't know why you would, but it's just a great opportunity to, to be able to have a couple of different um, music clips. You could potentially play a music with something that you've clicked. So if you have three different scenarios, you could put a music clip to each one that's different. So you could have the happy path and that one gets the bright, cheerful music. The medium path gets one and then maybe the suspenseful path gets the other one yeah. and they can choose one. They can choose from there. And that's based off of your clicking. Very cool. Very cool. This is great, Rebecca. Thank you for sharing this. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, investing your time and energy in teaching us. And now everyone's just hungry to go learn more, right? Mm -hmm. well, we're hungry to try uh, Cherry Garcia ice cream, but also uh, to try this out. Music is important, John. It sets the mood. I think one other thing to keep in mind, and I don't want to be the wet blanket on all the fun, and for the, it's important for us to think about cognitive overload and us putting things into program because of, because we like it because it's fun. Well, this is fun, but that's self hugging, you know, to the hundredth degree of, is it adding to the learning? Is it adding to the suspense? Is it adding to them wanting to click to keep going? Are they entering that magic circle of play or is it making it clunky and slowing down their learning and, uh, not adding to the learning experience. So it's always a fine line we walk, fine line we walk. But, you know, I was, I rewatched the, you know, the Star Wars with the young characters, you know how they remade Star Wars where Captain Kirk is Chris Pike. Has anybody seen those? There's two movies. Mm -hmm. They're so good. Mm -hmm. Star and Trek. I watched Star Trek. Star Trek, Trek. Yeah. Yes. I don't watch Star Wars. Yes. Star Trek. Yes. <laughs> Star Trek, but just the magic of the movie. I rewatched that this weekend and I was crying at the first scene, just how they took the theme from Star Trek and slowed it way down and made it very or orchestral with strings and minor tones and music does touch at our core of who we are. So it's very powerful. So I'm not saying don't use music and sound. I'm just saying, let's use them wisely. Let's use them where that does move people to an emotion because that's when learning will really stick when, when we get that, uh, that emotion happening with it. So it can be really powerful. All right. Thanks, Artrell's talking about himself in third person. Thanks, Artrell. Charles got to run. Uh, Michaela has a question. <laughs> I just said I, I won't. I can say goodbye to our trail. All right, goodbye. If Rebecca what? will stay for a moment, she can. Okay. Good yeah. question. Okay. Well, we're just at the bottom of the hour, everyone. So thanks for spending your Friday evening with us. I hope you had a great time as much as I did. Uh, little secret: we are going to start recording some of these sessions. Like this is one of them, and we'll be putting them out there for public consumption. We're not going to do every Friday, but ones that we know that aren't going to disappoint, we'll put those out there uh, at the top. And we knew Rebecca's was going to be great. So we did record this. And uh, if you want to stay around and ask Rebecca a few questions, please feel free to hang. Otherwise, have an awesome weekend. And we'll see you all next week. 
Don't forget to take advantage of that 15% discount on our courses. Just go to sententiagamification.com forward slash events. The courses on the Gamified Learning Academy and our certifications are on sale through Wednesday. So you can click and see what is getting that discount. And I believe it's save 15 is the promo code you want. So our level one starts Thursday. So don't procrastinate. Go ahead and get it done. Take care of it. And we'll see you there. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Next week. Next week, next, week. next week is next um, week. an open mic. So bring something you're working on, share, get feedback, problem solving. Got the group here to help you out with things. Excellent. That'll be fun. Hey. Is it last Friday already? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a busy month, Monica. Are you sure? Are you sure it's last Friday? You know what they say. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Okay, Michaela, it's great having you here. Thanks, John. All right, so Rebecca's still here to answer questions. Thanks, Glenda, for your input. Really good. There's Chen. Thank you, Chen. (laughs) And, you know, we call him Chen because he's a good friend. We don't normally call, like, Prindle and Chen. It's because we've known them all our lives. We don't normally just refer to people by their last names in a rude manner. Right, Chen? Cornetti. <laughs> yeah, Cornetti. He calls me Cornetti too. So Cornetti. Hey, Cornetti. Go ahead, All right. Michaela. <laughs> Michaela, so what you got? I would just say in IT, it is normal to be called by your last name. <laughs> oh, really? Arnett. Hey Arnett. Why is yeah. that? I do not know, but it is it is quite it is quite common they're, for they're culture. To, <laughs> it's the culture. Yeah. So like I have a manager that I know his name is Justin, but everybody calls him Yeso. And it, huh. his, his name is Yeso, and more than one will be like, Arnett. And I'll be like, what up? And that's, that is the culture. Huh. I think maybe, I don't know, good old boys club. Southern I think guys, IT. I was going to say that, but again, I didn't want to. Like some, some countries use last name as well. Like Japan, isn't it last name they use? Mm-hmm. So, so oh. maybe, it, it, I wonder if it comes from influence. Culturally, yeah. Cool. Interesting. Michaela had an intelligent question to ask. You're making an assumption there that it was intelligent. Um, Yeah, I I was just um, having a play um, with uh, what you were saying about the 3D model. Um, Uh And because whilst I've done like motion path stuff, I've not played with the 3D model thing. So I was just quickly trying to... um, Shall I throw it up so you can see what I was trying to do? And then you can tell me how to do it. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Hold on, where we share, share, share. Uh, um, oh, yeah. you see that okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what I thought I was trying to do, I don't know if it's actually showing the right thing now, hold me the screen, hold on. I'll just play it. So um, my theory was that you can't see the other screen, can you? Do I need to no, share? Yeah, we're seeing it. Yeah. We're seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. So if I click, so if I click on that, it goes to the next um, page, but then it's not doing the automatic um, trigger for this guy, um, which he should now start running across the screen. There we go. <laughs> there he is, <laughs> knocking that over. And I'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it'll, just, it'll, it'll be a lag. Maybe put it into PowerPoint mode down there. But before you do. Uh, oh, I think that little, made on mine. Should I do it again? But Hold before on. you do, in that um, motion up there in the animation pane, yeah. what was that, Rebecca, that somebody said, you might have to hit the replay. For my um, 3D animation to work, I had to click that. And I, I didn't even know that button existed. Rewind, yes. I didn't even know it existed. So if you click on that in the animation pane where it makes the motion, there's a little square that says, Rewind, Rebecca. Is that what it says? I think it says rewind after after play or something like that. Hold on, I'll pull up. Um, Go ahead and show your screen. Okay, sorry. Um, do, 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 do. right. So, PowerPoint made uh, from beginning, and hopefully that will come up now. Uh, which one that one? There you go. Yeah. So the idea was that you, oh, well done, that's the long slide. 
but I click on that. Um, it's triggered to the next slide, so that link works fine. But for some reason, it's not doing the automatic um, slide for this guy. What was it loading? Oh, like, to slide to slide to to the yeah, royal canine. So, so he's starting to. I think That's maybe so it's just being impatient. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> That's really cute. So wait a minute. Is that an animated? Is that you doing that? And I don't what I'm saying. Let me see. Rebecca, is that one of the ones that it doesn't have the movement already built in? And when she added that movement, that's so what she, she there's some movement that the dog does by itself. Like and that this? is the and that's the the, yeah. the the ear and things like that. But the moving is a, an animation that she added where she made him move. And that um, was really fun how he did that. Yes, but slide. it it yeah, yeah it makes, I want to make him walk. You want to make him walk, not not necessarily slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how do I do that? <laughs> uh let's see. I honestly, I will be honest with you, I am not um might be able to do it this way uh let, let me let me see so uh go back to your to your actual powerpoint presentation to the yeah mm -hmm. okay uh share that again uh powerpoint there you go yep okay so when you go to when you click on on the, the dog yeah um uh, and then you should um yeah, for the three D model, you see how there's different looks and feels of him mm -hmm. as you're kind of going across there. So yeah. you you could, yeah. So you could kind of look at that and see if there was some way to make him kind of walk. I turn to the side and then kind of I don't and know kind of and, kind of, oh, and do that. It's still gonna slide. Yeah, and then there's yeah. different scenes. So did you play with the different scenes to see what he does? I did, um, but I didn't find any that. That walk. made him walk. Yeah. Where are they the did, uh, oh, there, one. I see it. Yeah. 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 Um, they did like different things with um, like sometimes there's one where he gets his little suitcase out, which was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, there he goes on his back. We can not slide his back. But I couldn't see anything that made him just walk. So yeah, there, I, I guess it's really limited a... by the animation then. Yeah. Unfortunately, oh. it, he, he's not, he doesn't walk. Uh, like that but you 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 theoretically could just by but yeah you can make him do that or um i don't know if you you, you have you put like a little rope <laughs> well, how about okay. when he rolls on how about when he rolls on his back could you roll him over there on his back <laughs> <laughs> Try it. Well, I mean, on a rope like somebody's forcing him to have royal. you're gonna get this royal yeah. king and whether you wanted it or not <laughs> let's think which one would that work swivel maybe that's, I don't know. Then that's what cool. we call the illusion of choice haul them by rope over <laughs> the one we're advertising you can go to more motion paths they may have some more motion paths that might be a better fit Wait, i'm wondering if morph would work yeah that one uh which one um, I'm not quite sure. I don't get to use it very often because we don't have 360, unfortunately, but there is a newer thing in the last couple of years. It's been new called Morph. In the, I think it's in the motion path. Let me, let me Google real quick. Yeah, I saw it. You guys um, know what I'm talking it, about? I know what you're Dean, talking I about. I saw it, um, someone from, what is it? Bright, whoever they are, Bright Carbon, whatever his name is. He's, he's mm -hmm. British. He's so good. At, I saw him present at like a training magazine conference and, you know, just do this and do that and do this. Yeah. And he was doing, that morph, was, he was doing can, morph a lot. Yeah. yeah he's cool. got a lot of stuff at the training mag, you know, the, they do those webinars oh, yeah, and the webinars, the right. they're in the library and he yeah. has a whole thing. And actually you can go to his website too and download all kinds of templates and all kinds of stuff for PowerPoint. Yeah. His name is uh, Richard Gore, right? Richard Gore? Um, last name? Bright Carbon. Bright Carbon is the name of the company. Bright I think Carbon. It's Gore, but I could be 100% wrong. But if you go to Training Magazine Network, which is a free membership, they've got all those webinars that they've recorded, and you can access any of the old webinars, even if like you joined today, any of their previous webinars. Oh, yeah. You can access. 
Here's one uh, on their website, Bright Carbons, like 3D right. rotation using Morph. Ah, 3D rotation so, using Morph. So cool. Morph is on, well, no, Morph is, at, well, I don't know about their Morph, but the Microsoft Morph is on the Transitions tab, not the Animations tab. Yeah. It, I knew it, it, was oh. it morphs your PowerPoint slide, not necessarily the... Um, not, the anim not the image? Not the animation. Oh, okay. Can you put in your own image and do those things? Like, I'm wondering if you put in a clip of the same kind of dog, like just a little, um, a little a photo, GIF? No, you know, I don't know. A little photo it would have of a to dog be animated. that way. Then you can just make them yeah. do this. That would be. But that is another idea, Michaela. You could get an animated GIF. True, yes. Yeah, I just like, I just thought it said cute with 3D. I get a, yeah. Or yeah. you can actually you? look for so look on you can also look online. There's a lot like if you just Google 3D dog picture, mm. um, if you look and there are a bunch of different ones. Uh, let's see, 3D dog picture and it helps if I spell picture right. Do you know if you're able to import your own 3D models? So I, suppose, I suppose you can, can't you? It says you can. Yeah. Yeah. And then just find a couple of them that, that have him like doing like find one that looks like this and then one that looks mm -hmm. like this. And then what you could do is instead of doing the animation motion path, mm -hmm. you can make them automatically flip from one to the other and have okay. it going up the screen. So what you would have is you would have a set of pictures. One okay. like this, one like this, one like this, one like this. And it would be like um, you would set your animation pane to say, upon, let's just say upon click, this picture pops up, disappears, no this picture that, pops yeah. up, disappears, pops up, disappears, and then it appears that they're walking across the screen. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to have a play with this. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Yep. Hey, Michaela, and it looks like Michaela and Renee are hanging out at the same place tonight. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Looks like it might have grass. a lot of mosquitoes, so I'm just not sure about the mosquito population. That's too early for mosquitoes oh. here. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, no, they are they are rampant. <laughs> Monica, did you did Monica, did you say you're gonna be able to provide the recording of this? Uh Steve Abrams, are you gonna put the recording of this out on YouTube? Our YouTube channel? Uh you're muted. Uh, Always for the best when I'm muted. Um, it's, uh, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube next week. And then there'll be a social media post that'll have, uh, the link to it probably Tuesday. So okay. I haven't put it in, I don't know what the schedule is yet, but it'll be out. You'll get it by Wednesday. It'll be posted. I'll put it on, on the Facebook. newsletter on Wednesday too. So, okay. Yeah. so I'll, I'll it'll, be on Facebook, it'll be on LinkedIn. It'll be on Twitter. It'll be on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. I'll put it in the newsletter too. So okay. that's good. Tumblr. Tumblr. I'm going to we'll use it TikTok? to try to get yeah. us upgraded. <laughs> oh, TikTok. nice. Yeah. Cause we need to yeah. upgrade that. And I've been pushing for it. So I think that this might, some of the examples here, I could go, we could well, be doing still. Even with the upgrade, Julianne, it's still your most um, cost-effective tool, right? Yes. Like if they're gonna, if they're gonna, I can understand, like, if they're going to shirk at the cost of, like, um, storyline every year, every year we're going to get that. But yeah. this is, this is like, um, still very cost-effective. So, yeah, and something. like Rebecca said, they send updates every week. I didn't know that. I don't, yep. I don't play it's that much. Well, and, and, and like I said, some of them may not be things that you would see. Some of them may be patches in the back end. Some of them may be bug fixes, some of them things like that. But they're a very agile company. The other thing that, um, that I don't think people realize with Microsoft is if you go to Microsoft's website, uh, they have a huge community. And you can get a lot of information from people who use this all the time. You can also vote for items. So let's just say you're like, man, I really wish. So like for Michaela, man, I really wish they had that my 3D model had the ability to walk. If you put that on there, you'd be like, I th and other you could look for that. Other people probably had that same idea. They'd be like, man, I really love that 3D dog to be able to walk across the screen. You could upvote that, and so Microsoft looks at everything that that people vote for and when they're building out their roadmap they include those things in there uh, and so uh that's how we got for microsoft teams that's how we got breakout rooms so fast was because everybody that was on microsoft team was like i 
I don't have no breakout rooms. I got to have breakout rooms. Zoom has it. Everybody else got it. Why can't you have it? And that that became like the hot topic for Microsoft for quite a while. And so you can go into their support community and there are people who are using it for much more fantastic things than, than my little piddling stuff. Yeah, it's really fun. Again, it goes back to we get so used to just doing what we know and just staying in that narrow little tunnel of get it done, get it done, do what we know. And then there's like, what? 3D? Ooh. Yep. Yep. I, I'm going to lose some time. I will never get back tomorrow starting to play with it, right? But uh, it'll be fun to learn. That's really good. It's, it's fun to play with. Yeah. One, of the, one of the other things I used PowerPoint for was I created this little riddle me this game where I had people come in and they had to guess a riddle. So depending on your pro- it, how many points it was, it's kind of like Jeopardy, but you click on here and then you, you know, you can go back to your category or you can go back to the, or you can go to the answer. The person jumped mm-hmm. off. Huh? The person jumped off. All the people. Yeah, you don't see a single person on. The, you see, boat filled with people is not sunk. But when you look again, you don't see a single person on the boat. Why? Because you're sinking. No, you just you see a. It, it's not sunk. You just see a boat out in the water, and it's full of people. But you don't see a single person on the boat. Why is that? They're inside. No. Y'all are gonna laugh when y'all get the answer. All the people were married. Oh, what? <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see a single person on the boat. <laughs> we emphasized it wrong. You don't see a single person on the boat. You don't see a single person on the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I've created some of these. These are always great little like two minute to five minute engagement tools that that I'll use uh, would see in the middle of March and April that can't be seen at the beginning or end of either month. Or see, you got me back thinking in that mode again. Yeah, that's yep. good. Yep. You know, I love these for like energizers just to get people groaning and like, uh, but you know, they get relaxed, they laugh, refreshed. These are great. Very good. I did that one and I did uh, what's another one that it was um, film plots bad bad film plots given badly and it kind of the same concept but you would um, I went on Twitter and there's a whole you know uh, hashtag about it about um, badly explained film plots and you have to guess what the film is. So it would be something along the lines of English child dies seven times, almost dies seven times. A list child? English. English child. English. I feel like I should Harry know Potter. this. And I don't. Harry oh, Potter. I feel like you should. Very good. Oh, Harry Potter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Next yeah. question. I'll take. Um... <laughs> <laughs> all right hey Hey guys we gotta run it's been great fun thank you so much everyone for being here it's a fantastic much very good rebecca i have to let you know thanks rebecca that That was awesome thank you that um we're disappointed that your sister can't show the same kind of creativity and skill that you show rebecca Can I you know, don't have to show beforehand, Michaela. We, yeah, Michaela and Dad, we were giving her a hard time. Like, <laughs> what did Jonathan say? Oh, yeah, we're looking forward to this, Rebecca. We hope you don't disappoint hope us. Or yeah, what? Don't, hope you don't disappoint don't let us down. Yeah. Don't let, let us down. Us down. You know, it's like, wow, you're the, that, you and uh, what's another good coach that we know? Like, um, uh, give me a coach's name that's known for being a really good motivator. Tony Robbins, next question. Oh, Tony uh, Robbins. So Jonathan course. Peters, yeah. Tony Robbins. It's hard to tell them apart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Have a good Bye. 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 Bye.